these are the plaintiffs, Trisha and Chris. Trisha says she was walking her sweet and adorable Havanese Cooper on a leash, and the defendant's 60-pound beast of a pit bull came charging out of their garage, attacking Cooper and knocking her to the ground. The defendant's dog bit Cooper in the throat, and she thought he was going to be killed, but thankfully he wasn't. He did have some horrific injuries which needed surgery. The defendants paid for some of the vet bill. They refused to pay the rest, and they're suing. For the $2,947.92, they're still owed. These are the defendants, Shannon and Francois Page. Shannon says they paid the plaintiff $2,000 towards the vet bill because they were partially responsible for the mishap, but it was their neighbor who let their dog out, so she's the other responsible party. The plaintiff should sue her because they paid their fair share and owe nothing more. They're accused of shirking responsibility. All parties, please, is ready? Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Trisha and Chris, you're suing your... Are they your neighbors? My mother-in-law's neighbors. Your mother-in-law's neighbors, right. okay, who live in your mother-in-law's complex. Right. For the balance of the vet bills that they haven't paid because, according to you, their dog got out and attacked your dog. Tell me what happened. Okay. I, it was mother's, uh, last Mother's Day, May 12th, 7.30 at night, approximately, after dinner. I was taking Cooper out of my mother-in-law's driveway. Now, Cooper is a Havanese? Yes, he is. Okay. And we were walking up the street, uh, a couple of houses up, by a fire hydrant. Cooper was sniffing his way up. and uh, Was Cooper on a leash? Yes, he's on leash, yes. Okay. And a, step, a couple of steps past the fire hydrant, uh, a, gar a garage door that was open, a big brown dog came charging at Cooper and myself fast and knocked me down to the ground and proceeded to attack Cooper uh, violently, shaking, uh, grabbed his neck and his leg. And um, my Cooper was screaming. I was in a total state of shock. I started uh, screaming, please help me, help me. Someone, there was nobody outside. And I, uh, and, uh, and at that time, I was still struggling to get the dog off of Cooper, but it was, it was too far, I couldn't, I, it was too strong. And then neighbors came out, and uh, apparently Frank came out, the owner of the dog, of his house, which because of the stress I was under in a state of shock, I, I really didn't see Frank at that time. And the dog was taken away or brought back to its house. And at that time, one of the neighbors went down to tell Chris, to my mother-in-law's, all this is happening out front. Okay. So, so Chris comes out. Chris Does comes Frank out. Frank come back out uh, to talk uh, to you? Or? No, no. No. All right. No. So what happened? So what happened next was Cooper is screaming like a human, honestly. And I didn't want anyone to touch him except Chris because he, he probably would have bit someone. We picked him up, Chris picked him up, we got into our car, and we brought him to the animal hospital. Okay. And, and what ended up, uh, what were Cooper's injuries? Cooper had severe bites around his, his may I use my jugular, and his, his arm was broken into, his leg was broken in two places. Okay, and um, did and the was, bites around the neck require stitches? Yes. Okay, how many stitches do you know? Oh, gosh, about... There's only a few. A few, like three or four. Okay. But the puncture wounds were extended, and the, and the vet uh, basically said a couple of more seconds of him shaking, the, you know, the dog shaking Cooper violently, Cooper would have been gone. All right, so how long was Cooper in the vet hospital? Three days. All right, and then what you're suing for... Um, at, is the balance of the bill that they haven't paid. They paid part of it, but they refuse to pay any more. Uh, apparently, yes. Okay. Now, um, let me hear from you. We're either, you're Frank, right? Yes, I am. Hi. All right. How did you first, how did your dog get out? What kind of dog do you have? <clears throat> it's um, She's a lab pit black. bull mix. I have yeah. a picture here a of her. A lab pit bull mix. <sighs> how did your dog get out? I was on the couch watching TV. Somebody came at the, in my garage and knocked on my door. Then I, I proceeded to Was your garage door open? Yes. Why? 
You leave it open. You left it open. Yeah. Okay. So someone comes. Who's the someone? A neighbor? One of, yes. One of our neighbors. Okay. And Please. before I even read. So she knocks on the door in order to do what? She was bringing us some uh, cookies. Okay. So before I even reached the door, she opened the door and she said, I have cookies. And then my dog went right beside me. Okay. And then he went to reach for a dog. To, oh, so did you see your dog reach for the dog? Probably just a few seconds after he reached that little dog. Okay, so you get there and then you try to get your dog off. What was your dog doing to the little dog? Well, they were both barking at each other like crazy. Mm -hmm. So my dog was on top, the little dog was put his leg up like this and yeah. you know, going like this. Like your, the little dog was like being submissive and Correct. your dog did what? Uh, I didn't see exactly, I didn't see any shaking or anything like that. So I just grabbed the dog and just take him with me in the garage. Sense. All right, and then did you come back out? No, what I didn't think that. I didn't think the small dog was injured. I'm sorry, you didn't go back out to find out if the small dog was injured? No, I didn't. Oh my goodness. So then what happens? I guess your, is it your mother? Mm -hmm. Right, so your mother or your mother? My mother. This is your, so your mother um, reaches out to them and says, are you kidding me? And tells them, you know, you know what happened, right? Mm -hmm. And then you realize these guys are around a lot because it's his mother. And you reach out. Which of the two of you reaches out to them to say, I'd like to see Cooper? I did. All right. What <clears> happened? The next day at approximately, I don't know, three or four in if the afternoon. If you know your dog just attacked a dog, why wouldn't you walk outside to talk to them? He didn't see any blood or anything. It was like they were blood both... or anything. Why don't you go outside and make sure? Because the whole, like, what he sees is, oh, I grabbed my dog, I rushed him inside, and then what, you're hiding? You think it's just going to go away? I was sure there was no injuries. Did you talk to them? Yeah, nope. yeah, I talked. Well, I... No, no, that night. Not oh, that no. night, that no. Right, so how no. do you know there were no injuries if you don't go back out mm -hmm. to find out? All right, go ahead. So Sunday, we were all at the pool, all of us, as we usually are on Sunday, and we had all been drinking that day. And when Marguerite came over to give us cookies, she's our friend, it was her birthday as well. We're very friendly in this neighborhood. Garage doors are up all the time and people just come hey, and go. Let me just into... explain to you that your garage door being up and your garage door to your house being unlocked mm -hmm. is a problem. Well, he was so that, it's not an act of friendliness, stop, stop. If you don't have a pit bull that escapes and attacks, then it's just neighborly. But if you have a pit bull that you have to, what are you laughing at? I'm not laughing. She doesn't attack. She and, did it now. I don't believe that was. Oh, how what it do you think? Down. That she bit her own dog? No, no. <laughs> All right. She got out because our neighbor opened the door and said, Cookies. Then it's not an act of neighborliness. It's not like Mr. Rogers in the neighborhood no. that you leave your garage door open and you're garage for a neighbor to open the door. It turned out to have been a very bad idea, right? Yes. At least for Cooper, we're pretty clear. Go ahead. The next day, a neighbor had called me and said, Shannon, oh my God, Cooper almost died. I said, what are you talking about? I didn't even realize what had happened. And then I reached out to Chris at around 6.30 that night. I said, I'd like to see Cooper. I felt terrible. I was in tears. I was beside myself because Bella is a good dog. She is just because she's slash pit bull. No, I don't take anything out but, on pit bulls. They are the breed that they are, okay? I take things out on pit bull owners. Yeah. Because it's never, ever a poodle getting out and then wreaking havoc. It's you guys who own pit bulls need to be more careful and lock your doors to keep your dogs contained because they are pit bulls. But it's not their fault. It's the owner's mm -mm. fault. We never punish the conduct no. of the dog. It's not a bad dog. It's a bad owner that we punish. The owner that doesn't contain their dog. That's what gets punished in the eyes of the law. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. Are pit bulls more dangerous than the average dog? We have a lot of pit bull bite cases. Yes, the pit bull has a very strong jaw, and when they lock on you, oh, they just, they don't let go. That's true. That's, that's the that's thing about them. <laughs> but that, they, they have a lot of power, but are they more dangerous? Do they, are they more aggressive than other dogs? Uh, I don't believe so, just because my grandpa had one, and it was a very nice dog, abused, but like, still is a good pup, so I don't know. Okay, uh, you're going to be the tiebreaker. Uh, I think Pitbull is really vicious, so yeah, I think it's the most dangerous dog. You do think it's the most dangerous? I do, yeah. Why is that? Because they're pretty vicious, and you know, when they bite you, it hurts more than the average dog because how their jaw is. That's true. 
Yeah. That's true. But what, but what we don't know is, are they just generally more aggressive? Is it the owner that makes them aggressive, or is it the dog? That's the question. Going inside the card room. Well, we do contain our dog, and we always. Well, not that she's night, on a did leash. you? Well, we didn't open the door. Our neighbor did. How was your neighbor able to? It was unlocked. Oh. Okay. Go ahead. But I just don't feel we're a hundred percent negligible. I mean, when does a vet bill get negligent? What, negligent. Why not? <clears throat> Who do you think is the rest of the percent negligent? I think our neighbors has something to say about then this. Then you, you're free to sue your neighbor. Yeah. But you think that because you leave your door unlocked and their dog gets attacked, that they have to go through the trouble of seeking redress against two different parties? No, I feel terrible what happened. Do and, you? Because if you felt really that, terrible, we wouldn't be here, right? Uh, or it's just you feel this much, you feel $2,000 terrible, not. 5,000, whatever, terrible. $2,400. All right, um, look, I, with all due respect, uh, I hear what you're saying. Um, I hear, you, you know, you feel like it's not your fault because you didn't open your own door. You're wrong about that when it comes to the law, okay? It's your job to contain your dog. And if you leave your front garage door open and then you leave the door unlocked and then you're getting up to go whoever's knocking and then your dog blows past you, it is 100% on you. And if you feel that the lady bringing you cookies <laughs> should be brought in, you go sue cookie lady <laughs> and say, hey, I think you, you know, I think you need to contribute here because it was your fault. You're not gonna do that. Um, so I find in favor of the plaintiffs and the amount of the rest of the vet bill plus their court costs. Good luck, folks. So no question about it, the defendants are responsible in the eyes of the law. What do you think, Ms. Page? It is what it is. We felt really bad about Cooper's injuries and we didn't want any of this to happen, but I just don't feel we were 100% negligent. Well, you can't blame the cookie lady. No, I guess not. I you guess really we can't. can't. I mean, that's not fair. <laughs> so, no. but, but we're, it's what, all good. What has this done to peace in the neighborhood? How about oh, that? We're, all, all we're still friends. You're still friendly? We oh, yeah. still hang out together at the pool, and yeah, everything's good. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good people. Yep. Good okay. People. Yep. Just be careful of your dog. Accident. Be careful of your dog. Okay. You. Know. Learn the lesson. Very good. Okay. The plaintiffs are on their way out of the courtroom, Trisha and Chris. You know, it's a shame you had to go through this to go to court to bring them, you know, they, but they wouldn't pay, huh? Yeah, we had gotten the idea that, um, that you know, they had said they would pay originally uh, immediately, and then they gave us some money and then yeah. just stopped. And yeah. it wasn't until some neighborhood chatter that we actually figured out why they had stopped. So is is it peaceful in the neighborhood? They say it is. Yes, you, yes. They're very friendly, friendly now? Very yeah. friendly. friendly. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And how's Cooper? Cooper's much better. Thank you very much. He's going to be okay. He's going to be okay. Yes. Good enough. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good enough. Congratulations. Thanks. Harvey? I mean, look, the defendant should have locked the door. I mean, that's number one. Number two, if the neighbor has permission to go in and open the door and lets the dog out, that's not on the plaintiff. That's on the defendant.